Hey guys, welcome to the Editing Bard, the channel that brings you writing tips that make sense. If you enjoy tips, tricks, and hints on how to improve your writing, make sure that you go down and hit that little bell notification icon and the subscribe button, so that way you get notified on when I upload videos. Now, today's topic is one that I've been excited to do, and it is about pro writing aid and how to set it up to work for you in a way that actually makes sense to what it is that you are writing. Now, I'm gonna be talking specifically about fantasy, fiction, science fiction, those types of things, but it is going to apply in a very broad sense to what it is that you write. So, without any further ado, let's cue the intro and get this party started. All right, so now I'm going to assume that you know what pro writing aid is. If you're watching this video, if you don't know what it is, then I'm going to give you a quick introduction. Pro writing aid is a very helpful writing tool that helps you do um, some self editing and it really helps you improve your writing and dig in to what your style is. Now it is a paid application, so you do need to figure out whether it's going to be in your budget. However, for a year, it is right around $70 or so. Uh, and then you can also get the lifetime one where you basically own it for like 50 years. So I'll be close to my 80s by the time this sucker renews and I'll be old and senile by then. So I won't, I won't even have to bother with it. And I hit it on a discount. So that was like, I paid 140 for it, which is a heck of a deal. $240 is what it normally goes for. Even that is a heck of a deal when you look at um, what all is included in that. That being said, uh, we're going to dive in now and I'm going to start off with the very basics of how to get things set up before you've even started the writing process or before you've even uploaded or looked at any of the reports. All right, so as of right now, we are sitting in the documents screen. You can see that I have currently three different documents here. I have a sample chapter. That's what we'll be looking at here later when we dive into the reports. Uh, I have a test one that I usually use for my clients, and then I have my actual novel um, in its entirety here. I don't use this one uh, to show people because it takes forever to load which is kind of a downside. Uh, Pro Writing Aid does take some time to upload documents. So if you have like a 150,000 word novel, do not under any circumstances upload the entire thing to Pro Writing Aid. It will work better if you upload it in individual chapters. It may be a pain in the butt, but trust me on this, you don't want to have to go through that. Now, in this, you can either delete the selected over here, or you can change it into a grid pattern. This is much easier to see uh, those individual chapters when you are writing them. Uh, you can just simply upload them. I don't believe you can create a folder, um, which would be nice. Uh, then you can kind of store all the documents in one place. Now, here is what we're going to do and kind of look at later. Um, so file, you can choose new or you can choose to upload. Now, the chapters that I had were in a Word document and I simply uploaded them to Pro Writing Aid and it kept all of the formatting. So if you don't wanna to have to go back through and reformat everything, make sure that you upload, not just copy and paste. Now over here, you'll see the tab and we'll click on that. You see home documents, which is where we're at currently. Uh, home gives you what your license number is for pro writing aid, whether you uh, want to do the affiliates, um, which I am an affiliate. Uh, the link that I have down below this video is an affiliate link. So if you decide to go and purchase this, then I make a small commission off of that it a lot of people do that I would recommend that you do it if you love pro writing aid um, you know there's no reason why you shouldn't let people know about it and 
be able to get a little bit something back. And um, so then, and then you have billing and then settings. I'm, we're going to focus in on settings. So clicking on that, that's going to take us to our application settings, combo reports, overused words, all of it. I highly recommend that you get this set up before you actually start writing. Uh, now, I have not done this for my own because I wanted to show you guys. So combo reports, this gives you an idea of what reports are going to show up when you select combo. And that is a report that we'll get into later. So if you want to look for very specific things, you need to come in here and check mark them off first. So if I want um, eloquence, I would check that. If I want to make sure that I'm not overusing dialogue tags, um, which I am known to do, uh, I would select that. Another one that I like to make sure that I'm doing is that I have a good pace and my paragraph length is on point. So if I want to do all of those, then I would just come in here and select them. I recommend that you do this before you get into the actual document. Uh, then you can add overused word checks. So one category per line, you know, smile, smiles, smiled, uh, just then put those in the ones that you know that are overused, like just as so, but is a big one. You hear me say, but all the time and you say, and I say, um, all the time, that is more something that you'd find, uh, in a video than you would in your book. Your characters aren't going to be going, um, 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 all the time. But if you know what words that you tend to overuse, this would be the place that you come in and put them because it's going to look specifically for those things. Very, very important. Uh, you can define your own writing rules using style guides. Now, we're not going to get into that because there is a whole rabbit trail that you can go down there. Uh, you can ignore certain things, cliches, for instance, in dialogue, redundancies in dialogue, vague words, uh, diction errors. I, I leave that open. I would choose to leave that open because I want to actually see what my writing is doing. And then your repeat uh, settings. So how many repeated words or phrases will show up in any given uh, length? So then we would go and we would save our settings. We have the little confirmation here. And now we're going to get into the actual application. I'm going to pull up the, uh, the sample chapter that I have, and then we're going to start looking in that. Okay, so we are now in the sample chapter and I'm going to show you the settings that will help you in the actual document. So you're going to come up here to where it says settings and it'll have a little flag. So there's general English. If you click on this, it'll give you general, British, USA, Australian, and Canadian. I don't, I don't think Canadians actually speak English. I'm just kidding. It's just being funny. Uh, so if you want something that kind of bridges both, uh, you can do that. If you are writing specifically for a particular audience, then I would highly recommend that you choose one of these other ones and not just the general. There are very different ways of spelling and phrasing things. Uh, so for this example, I'm going to choose U.S. English. Now, in my writing style, this tells the algorithm in here what it is exactly that I'm writing and how I want it to report back to me what I'm writing. And some of the things will change a lot depending on what you choose here. So general is basic blog posts, you know, very, very basic, basic stuff. Uh, academic, you're looking at thesis papers, um, other reports, business, same kind of thing, business reports, the things where you need to have more formalized language, uh, same for technical. Creative is more of the poems, um, you're looking at books, those kinds of things here. Casual, uh, 
it's just it's very laid back it's not very restrictive so you can get away with a lot more of the slang uh, web is you're also probably going to be looking at just your general blog posts articles things of that nature and then script is if you're doing more screenplay scriptish type things then you could choose that for this because this is the first chapter in my fantasy novel I'm going to choose creative now if you're doing nonfiction then what I would suggest you do is leave it at a general setting it's not going to be too restrictive that it sounds like you know your your iq level is at like a 300 and you're super genius and there's just a lot of big words it's going to be that kind of middle of the road for it kind of encompasses all of them so that is where i would recommend you stick if you're doing non-fiction if you're doing fiction you should be living out of creative and then if you needed to get back somehow to the application settings that we were in, then you can click this button right here, app settings, and it will take you back to that. All right, so before we get into the reports, I'm going to show you guys real quickly now that we've gone over the settings. Uh, we're going to go over here to the top left corner where it says menu. We're going to click that open. Now it's going to give us a lot of different options here. Uh, you can do your normal file, new, save, save as, upload, and export. Then when it comes to edit, uh, converting to straight or curly quotes, I know for me, I didn't know that there was a difference, uh, but apparently different uh, applications have a different way of doing it. Some will be straight, some will be curly, and you usually don't know which is which because honestly, who actually looks at that stuff? I don't. So pick one, convert it, save yourself a lot of time um, because it's probably going to yell at you later on about that. Then Word Explorer is kind of a way to find new definitions for words, uh, synony synonyms, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I recommend that you do that before you actually open up the application. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer to load when you have the document in here so just be aware of that uh, I played around with it a little bit earlier and it came up um, with a lot of different definitions uh, that were a lot of fun to read so recommend that then down here you have uh, documents which is the first page that we were on when I opened this up and that will list out all of the documents that you have currently saved in ProWriting Aid then you can go to your profile same as uh, the last time that's where you can um, adjust the different settings and then you have the settings which is where we were at uh, a few minutes ago that you know you can check mark all the boxes uh, edit my dictionary is a way to kind of help the program understand what it is that you're trying to say so like for instance uh, trinia is a word that the computer does not recognize as an actual name so I would need to go in there and edit the dictionary to reflect these names so that way it doesn't keep yelling at me with stuff that doesn't make any sense because it's supposed to be there so if you have those kinds of words make sure you go into that and do that uh, support is pretty self-explanatory that's basically the help me I'm stuck button or oh my gosh the world's imploding and uh, they'll, they'll send you as much help as they possibly can. Plugins are super important. So if you're paying for this, then you really want to try and maximize what it is that you're getting out of it as long as it doesn't cost you more. So the plugins that they have available are for Microsoft Office Word, for Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Uh, you have it for Google Docs. And you also have it for Scrivener. So if you want to kind of capitalize on the fact that you've just paid this money and you want to get the most out of it as possible, then I would highly recommend you go through and you install these plugins in whatever capacity is applicable for you. Uh, because when you're using stuff like I don't use this to write my book, I use Microsoft Office Word. 
Now, right now I have Grammarly set up in that, but I want to transition over to this because Grammarly, A, it costs more over the long run, uh, and two, this is just more in depth and I want to improve my writing. So I will be adding that kind of stuff in and I'll probably do a video uh, later on on how to kind of maximize it in Word once I've had a chance to kind of play around with it. So keep that in mind um, as you're going through. Now we're going to get into the reports and how to kind of maximize those to make sense for you and what it is that you're writing. Now, getting into the reports, you can see here that in real time, it's counting up based on the parameters that I gave it. Beforehand, it had uh, under general English only like five or six uh, different issues that have popped up. Now that I've customized it to match what my writing style is going to be, it's now gonna go through there and it's now going to count everything. For now, I'm going to turn it off because I don't want that going. Uh, summary is going to be a very long d document that covers every report in a very minuscule amount of detail. I don't want or recommend that you uh, just dive right into the summary until you have a basic understanding of how you want per writing aid to work for you and how you want to make it work. Um, so we're going to look at style first. So style is talking about the different uh, passive or uh, passive sentences or hidden verbs. It's going to be looking for a lot of those kinds of things. So as you can see, there's 33 readability enhancements, 13 passive verbs. You can click on it and you can look at where those are. So here is one of those passive verbs. And I didn't realize how back to back that was. That'll show up again later in another report. Mostly uh, is not one that I need here or be crowded. It's another passive word. I get yelled at a lot for passive verbs and passive writing. Uh, you have four hidden verbs and that's going to show you where those are at and have, have a fighting, had a feeling, no style improvements, no long support in uh, subordinate clauses. So you want to use this to figure out, okay, am I writing in a passive way? And if you're like me, you probably are <laughs> and it's going to yell at you for a little while about that. What you can do with this is that there are things in here in these reports that you have to remember are suggestions. They are not cold, hard facts or rules that you have to change. Sometimes it's going to make more sense to leave it than it is to change it. In large part, you have to look at it from that perspective of this is a suggestion how can I rephrase this sentence to remove it? Can I rephrase the sentence without losing the meaning behind it? More often than not, you're going to find that you're, you are able to actually change the sentence and it would improve the overall quality of that paragraph. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, passive index, which means that, you know, overall my passive writing is low. Um, it's at a 6.1 and the target is up to 25. Uh, I don't entirely know how it ranks that. So just keep that in mind that there are certain things that are like, okay, it's just general rule. Try to keep it below this number. This number has been calculated by somebody who has looked at all of the other writings published and this is what they've found. Uh, if you want to know more about each and every report, you can go down, hit the little link down here, and it will do so. It'll take you, um, I believe, to their blog, and you can read till your little heart's content. So this report is the grammar check, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's checking for grammar errors and potential word misuse. Uh, you can see that I have 12 spelling issues found. 
you can click on it and be like, okay, which one's wrong? Um, utilizing these reports. Now these are these are core reports. So this is kind of the very basics and stuff. The customization kind of comes on the later half of these reports. But it's important to understand like what it is that you're looking for. If you know that your grammar is like eh, not the greatest, then make sure that you run this report and really try to improve on that. Learn from it. Uh, for example, here, uh, it appears that you have an unnecessary comma in a compound predicate. Okay. If there is a comma there, then it's giving you a reason why the comma should be removed. So pay attention. Don't just click and say, okay, yeah, well, whatever. I just need to fix it because it's not always going to be accurate. I'd say more often than not, it tends to be about 50 to 60 percent accurate on what it is that it's suggesting but you have to think about what you know and what it's telling you so keep that in mind this is why there are suggestions if there's something there that's not working look at it as a way to okay well if i remove that it doesn't make sense so i just rewrite the sentence how can i rephrase the sentence one, it's going to help you grow. Two, it's going to help you kind of expand your vocabulary a little bit because you're going to look for different words to use. Now we have our Theosaurus Rex, or just a thesaurus for those of you who don't have a sense of humor like I do. Uh, it is to help find replacement words for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So if you want to kind of make it better, if you want to strengthen what it is that you're trying to say here, then you want to make sure that you utilize this. Now, in this case, it says the report is very resource intensive and so only runs on a few thousand words at a time. So you can run it on a few words by highlighting. Let's see what I can do here. So I've highlighted just the first two. Okay, and it worked. So I have 14 verbs, one adjective and 18 nouns. You can go through and look, ran, went, drove, rode, traveled, flew, raced, fell, rushed, shot. So definitely make sure that you're utilizing this. Don't go through and change all of the words just because you can and just because you think that it sounds pretty. That is going to very quickly turn into purple prose. So do it sparingly, but make sure that you do use it you want to make it feel realistic you want to make it feel big and fantastical and this is a way that you can change things up so that way it doesn't sound quite so repetitive so next we're going to look at the overused words and again overused words is kind of what it sounds like so could you may have overused this phrase and compared to publishing uh, it compared to publishing writing consider removing one occurrence from 15 so it's going to tell you exactly how many you did and where you can find them so in this case this is couldn't um, so I wouldn't necessarily agree with this one um, <laughs> because it's not technically the same but I get what it is they're saying uh, again that is where you have to make a judgment call like okay does this matter probably not if I scroll down, couldn't, could. So I need to remove one of these from the 15 occurrences that are in just this chapter. It's not saying which one, just one of them. It tells you kind of how many and how much you need to remove, uh, which is really kind of important because sometimes we're not always going to know. This is going to help you clean up your writing. Uh, this should not be used while you're writing your first draft. I should make that clear. This is when you've gone back and you're looking at your second draft or even your third draft to really kind of polish it. It should not be used during your first draft. Grammarly, like I've said in my video, and I'll post a link up above, Grammarly is better for first draft. This is better for the subsequent drafts after that. So next is the combo reports, and that is the combination of everything that we checked marked in our settings. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I want to focus on the other things um, individually. But if you've 
customized your reports, this is where you would go and you'd see it all on one screen. All right, so it took a little bit to finally actually get it to load. And now we can see here, uh, if we click on it, nope, won't do nothing, just kidding. Uh, so I use frequent eight word phrases. I use this twice, apparently the hairs on the back of her neck, uh, not something that I realized I was doing. Uh, so I use those twice. Looks like I use a lot of these phrases at least twice in this chapter. Um, these ones, uh, looks like I use three times. So this is giving you a really great idea of how often you're repeating things. So was supposed to. Now it did not show up um, on this side, uh, which is interesting. I was pretty sure I was going to, but it's going to help you figure out where those repeated phrases are and how you can fix them. Because if I realize like, okay, if I'm making these repeated statements throughout Again, it's not a hard rule that I have to remove them or rephrase them, but it gives me something to think about and gives me something to look at. This is not something that you do in the first draft. This is something that you do later. I want to emphasize that, and I will probably continue to emphasize that several more times as we get into these more uh, in-depth reports because it is so important that you don't get stuck on this kind of stuff. It is important. It is helpful tools that will point you in the right direction to help you improve your writing, but it should not be taken just 100% every single time. Okay. Don't, don't fall into that trap. All right. So that is um, the repeated words and phrases. Uh, next we'll look at echoes. So it looks like here I had 86 close repeats. So it's looking for, words and phrases that you may have repeated within a short space. Uh, so trinia is one of them. So that's highlighted in green. So you got trinia, 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 trinia. That is a little bit closer than I probably had intended for them to be. Ah, there was, uh, was supposed to, was supposed to, I, I knew it popped up in one of these reports. So I can choose um, to fix any of the trinias. Uh, it does give me some suggestions here. I, oh, under the ox wagon. Uh, so that's good because I do say cart down here as well. And so if you scroll through, milled around it, I don't know if that's going to give me anything to go off of. It doesn't look like it. So use these to fix those closely repeated words. So behind her, behind her, around, around, trinia, trinia, the guards, the guards, trinia, trinia. Yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of things that I need to clean up here. Use this for that purpose. Figure out, okay, where can I rearrange some things? The was supposed to, what options does it give me? Does it make sense or do I need to rephrase the actual structure of the sentence or rework the structure of the sentence to make it better uh, than what it is currently. And you're still probably going to get stuff show up. Let's face it. Um, we're not perfect, but it will help you figure out a lot of that stuff. All right. Next, we're going to be moving on to the structure of the sentences. Now I found this one to be particularly interesting. So what it's actually doing here, it's comparing my sentences to actual published works, which is really kind of invaluable for you. So 69% of my sentences start off with a subject compared to 72% in published writing. So I'm about on average with that. And uh, it is going to change depending on the style choice that you chose. So in this, I chose creative. When I initially did it in general, uh, that 69% was actually way above and beyond what was actually accurate for in published works. Uh, it was much, much lower, this number down here at 72%. So I was way off base. So if that's why it's so important that before you get into these reports, you make sure that those style things in the settings are set. 
before you do this because it will inform the reports on how they should be looking at it. So this is really helpful for you because you can understand if you're on point with books that are published in your style, your writing style. If you're doing nonfiction, you should be looking at general. If you're writing nonfiction, but it's business oriented, then you need to be doing business. If you're writing nonfiction and it's technically oriented, you need to do technical or academic. If you're doing um, nonfiction, generational, uh, not generational, motivational, uh, or inspirational, self-help, things like that, that would fall under general. So you're going to have a very basic guideline there. Uh, with creative, it is very, very different in terms of the style of writing. So it is imperative that you select creative when you're doing this. So that way it is comparing you accurately to the books that are currently published in that are of that creative mode. All right, moving on to sentence length. All right, so sentence length um, is very important because you need to have variety. I run into this a lot with clients that I'm doing editing for where their sentence lengths aren't varied enough. So it's either really, really choppy or it just kind of sounds like a run on sentence. So it's very, very important that you make sure that you pay attention to where you're at with the sentence length. So it's going to give you the number of words, first of all, uh, and I'm sitting at just under 3,200, the number of characters, the average sentence length is anywhere between, or uh, it's, it's about 14 and a half words or so, and my target is anywhere between 11 to 18. So I'm right on point there. The sentence variety is 6.2. My target is over three. So I'm, I'm hitting it really good there. So 10 or less, I have 77 sentences. 10 to 19, I have 70. 20 to 29, I have 50. And then you can see like I have very few sentences that are actually over 40. Uh, I only have one. Uh, and really anything over 30, it drops dramatically. I like to keep my sentences a little bit on the shorter end of things. It kind of helps keep the pace going at the rate that I want it to go. And then you can actually look at it on a sentence by sentence level by clicking this, and it will take you through each one to show you where it's at, which is very, very helpful. To kind of understand like where your longer sentences are how to better understand where to break up those sentences if need be and it actually gives you the the full bar so uh i know i'm scrolling really fast here so here's here's the 50 words right so this is the one sentence that i have that's actually over the 40 and that is something that i would need to look at and be like okay does this is this appropriate uh, is this a good fit? If it's not, then I need to go back and I need to change it. Keep that in mind as you're doing your sentences that you need to keep it within a certain realm. You need to provide variety. It switches it up for the reader and it gives them that experience. You have to think of it in that way. You're giving the reader an experience in the way that you structure each sentence and paragraph helps bring them through that experience. Uh, that being said, we're going to move on to transitions and what that looks like. So for transitions, uh, this is ten, tends to be where I maybe go a little bit overboard because uh, I am at 145.07% and the suggestion is just over 25%. So I'm definitely over that. Um, but as you can see down here, what it says is the transitions uh, help organize ideas. Writing that is short on transitions is often hard to follow. Uh, nonfiction writing that has under one transition per four sentences tend to be less understandable. So I want my reading to be easily accessible. I need people to follow what it is that I'm doing. So I have a lot of transitions. That doesn't mean that I'm right in having the quantity of transitions that I have. Uh, it, I have to look at it. You know, Trinia ran as fast as her, as her legs. So the, the as fast as I could probably change. 
I don't necessarily need both of those transitional words there. Um, you know, she crept out from under the cart on the other side and peeked around the corner. Uh, as you can, you'll see in the sticky words, I actually get nailed on that sentence because there's too many words there for the reader and they kind of get caught up on it. So that is something to keep in mind and to be aware of is where are my transitions at? How many transitions do I have? Is it understandable? More than 25%, then you're looking at your reading is going to be very easy. If it's less than that, no one's going to understand it. Um, probably without like some sort of um, acronym in front of their name. So I don't write that way. <laughs> Mine's going to be easier, hence more transitions. Uh, now we're going to move on to the readability, which is to me the creme de la creme of what it is and what I use for writing. All right, so it is very, very important to pay very close attention to the readability of your book as you are writing it. Uh, Grammarly does do this, and I talk about that in the other video very quickly. But this is really where it counts, okay? Understanding your book's readability and who your target audience is, is imperative. So the estimated reading time of this is 12 minutes and 39 seconds. Now remember, this is um, approximately 3,200 words. I've purposefully cut the chapter off at 3,200 words to get this time. Now, 10 minutes is what I roughly shoot for, anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. Why? Because I want bingeable chapters. Now, a lot of people don't talk about this when they talk about writing a book or even structuring a chapter. They talk about kind of the mechanics, three act structure, all that kind of stuff. And while those are important, I want to create a reader experience. I want to create chapters that they cannot put down because of how I've purposefully paced them. And the way that the way that I figured that out was actually by using um, Wattpad. Uh, Wattpad recommends anywhere between 1500 and 2500 words, which is where I tend to get uh, for my writing template. I use that as my basis because that is about 10 minutes of read time, roughly uh, for your average reader. It's about 10 minutes of read time. This means that on someone's lunch break or someone's 10 minute break, because I used to work in fast food, this is how I think, I'm like, I want to give somebody something that they can read in that time frame and be like, I have to keep going, or I wish I could keep going, or what happens next? And it leaves them on a little mini cliffhanger, not a big one per se, but a mini cliffhanger. And I structure that in this way and I use this time to make sure that I'm hitting that goal. Very important. If you don't care about it, totally fine. But understand that when you get upwards of about 5,000 words, you're looking at closer to 20, 25 minutes of read time. And unless someone has a 30 minute lunch, an hour lunch, or a time after uh, the kids go to sleep and they're not paying bills and they're not doing all these other crazy things. They have less time to read and it means that they may have to bookmark or dog ear the page to, to understand it's because they didn't, they ran out of time. So if you create it on the shorter end, it means that you may have more chapters, but it doesn't matter because if you create binge worthy chapters, People are going to read them. People are going to burn through them. So it's it's about using the reader mindset. It's about giving them those little dopamine kicks where they're like, oh, I finished a chapter. They close it. They feel good about themselves. Stopping in the middle of a chapter, they're like, all right, well, I hope I remember what happens in this point, you know, and close it up. Um, it says document ready to read. Woohoo. Um, reading ease is 82.2, which means that... Um, and you'll see this in the summary. The 
uh, the youngest age that someone would be able to read and comprehend and understand my book is 11. And my range is YA. So even if someone earlier than that gets a hold of my book, they're still going to understand the concepts and what it is that I'm talking about here. So the higher that score, the easier the read it is. Um, I think the only way that I could get any higher than where I'm already at is if I was, it was like C. Jane Run. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind uh, as you're writing. If you're writing YA, you want a higher score. Typically, uh, right around 70 is kind of a sweet spot for that. Uh, so very difficult paragraphs to read, zero. Uh, two slightly difficult paragraphs to read, and I did look over those when I was kind of looking through here, and they are a little bit harder to read. A lot of it is because I try and just get too technical, too wordy with it. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're doing this. The readability is not for you. It's informing you of how your readers or your potential readers are going to be able to respond to your book. You want them to have a higher chance of responding. You want to create bingeable chapters that leave them with a sense of wanting more. All right, enough of that. On to the sticky words. I don't know about you, but I hate sticky words. Uh, and it took me a while to actually figure out what it was that they were talking about, uh, mainly because I didn't really care. Now I do, so I have to actually pay attention. All right, so sticky sentences. In writing, they slow your reader down. Uh, as you can see, this is the sentence that I mentioned earlier. And so she crept out from under the cart on the other side and peeked around the corner. That's a lot. I guess to just say she got out under the cart and peeked. Like, that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, so I need to shorten that. And it will actually tell me what ones that I need to remove. So the glue words are out from under the on the uh, are on other side and around. So I need to remove those, which means I need to restructure my sentence. This is why you don't do this when you're writing the first draft. Otherwise, you would drive yourself insane and you would never get your story written. This is to hone your writing. These things are to hone not to write your first draft. So please understand, keep that in mind. I don't know how many times I can reiterate that, um, but I will continue to do so because it is important. All right, now that is really all that there is to sticky words. Um, we're going to move on to uh, cliches. And that's basically what it is. Uh, cliches outside of dialogue. Now or never, came across, looking out, brushed off, she lost her, keep her eyes open. Uh, again, I could change those. Um, I don't have to. I don't. Uh, cliches are things that are familiar to people. And while there are some that are just kind of eye roll worthy and you're just like, oh, gosh, and it just makes you like want to barf. Those don't fall into that category so much. Um, those are just descript descriptors that people often use. So if I really was worried about it. I could go through and remove them. Six in just the first chapter, I'm not particularly worried about because it's going to get lost on the reader. That's the whole thing is cliches can get lost. Redundancies, those are important to take care of. If I'm saying the same thing twice, that I need to correct and to fix. Those types of cliches, I really honestly would not worry about it. But it is good to know where they are and what it is that they are. All right, on to diction here. Uh, abstract or vague words. So wood, 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 lots of wood. Uh, keep in mind that it's going to highlight vague or abstract words uh, to help you kind of be more purposeful with it. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to have a lot of like little cleanups here that I need to fix. And uh, more often, so like it's wood is the top one seemed they're not descriptive words right they're vague they're they're just vague words so i need to have something that's a little bit more purposeful and a little bit more clear as to what it is that i'm trying to convey because while that worked for the first draft it's not necessarily going to work for the finished product 
So that is all that there is for their um, pronouns is basically what it says. It's to make sure that you're not overusing pronouns. Now, the ones that I want to get to specifically um, are dialogue and pacing, um, especially for fantasy. So let's take a look at dialogue here. I have six dialogue tags, cry, reply, ask, say. And it says down here, editors prefer minimal use of all dialogue tags except for said. That's fine. Dialogue tags are not of the devil. Now, if you have a dialogue tag after every single sentence, then that might be a problem. However, you can show more through a character beat or beat before they actually dive into that. So you're not adding it on to the tag. So you could say, you know, Trinia cried, and then I would put in the dialogue. So you show, or she started to cry, and then I put in the dialogue. Um, rather than, um, you know, she cried after, and it's a dialogue tag. I don't think that they're of the devil. Uh, I really don't. I would rather put too many in and then have to remove some than I would trying to restructure stuff because I don't have enough. That's the way that I tend to think about it. I would rather write more and then cut than write less and then try and figure out where I want to add it. So keep those kinds of things in mind. They are suggestions. They are not cold, hard facts. They are not rules. Um, and as you can see, this is really short on dialogue. There's a lot of action that's happening in this first chapter. Um, and I haven't ran it on the other ones. So moving on to pacing, this is another important thing. So it's going to tell you how slow the pacing is in these sentences, in these paragraphs. Uh, you don't want to have too many back to back. So this one, it says is a slow one. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I wouldn't necessarily agree with it. Uh, and these ones, yeah, these problems are going to be a little bit slower because I am trying to show and do a little bit of world building. So as you can see, it's actually fairly, uh, yeah, that one's, that one's big. Um, for the most part, it's, it's fairly spread out. So just make sure that if you're going to have slower pacing, which you do need to have, it can't all be at breakneck speed. You just need to understand where it is that your slower pacing is. Is it spread out enough? Because if you have a huge block that is super slow, guess what? People are going to skip. They're going to skim because they want to get to the good stuff. But if you interweave it in between, then it's a lot easier and it kind of keeps the pace going where it doesn't feel like it's bogged down. So while these may be slower, if you look at the distance between my last slow paragraph here and the next one here, there's a lot of action happening between those. So when I get to this slower paragraph, the reader, it gives that reader a little bit of a we're not being chased anymore, or it gives me a chance to build tension. So uh, that is what you want to ideally be using the pacing check for, is just making sure that you're doing it in the best way possible for your story. I hope that you guys found this video very helpful. It was on the longer side, um, but there was so much that I wanted to show you and that I really wanted to try and help get through when you're setting this kind of stuff up and what to really look for in the reports and how to use them more effectively. Because let's face it, when you first dive in, uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming looking at all the reports and be going, ah, I don't even know where to start. Like, and if you haven't, if you haven't done the settings, then none of it's going to matter because it's going to be all sorts of messed up. You have to start with the settings. You have to start with getting those combo reports that you want specifically to look at ready to go and check marked. And then we didn't touch on the summary because I did do that in the previous video. 
um, where I did the comparison between Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid. I wasn't going to rehash that because it is a lot. It is all of those reports in one big long report. If you want to see everything at a glance, use the summary. If you want to actually just focus in on one thing at a time, which I would highly recommend, just go through the reports one at a time. Take time to do that kind of stuff. It's important for your book to know how to make these tools work for you, not you try and figure out how to work for it, to try and figure out how to work around it. You have to make it work for you. So I hope you guys have found this to be helpful in getting that set up for your writing. Now, if you have any additional questions, make sure that you go down and comment. I'd love to answer any questions that you have, and I will do my best to answer anything that you have. But also let me know, like, what other things do you do? What reports do you find helpful? What setups do you use for your writing that help you if you own this program? I would love to know because I'm looking at being able to adjust mine uh, to really kind of help increase my writing ability and my skill set. So make sure you go down, comment below. Let me know if you've used it in any of the plugins that were mentioned earlier. And if you haven't already, make sure you go down, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. So that way you get updates when I upload every other Friday. So I thank you guys so much and I'll see you again next time. Take care guys.